if there's one thing that makes people tear their hair out in frustration with Microsoft Word, then it's got to be multi-level numbering, something like this list here. But I reckon we can get it sorted in this video. So let's just start off by looking at what we're aiming for. And I also want to point out what happens with the markers on our ruler when we work with these numbered lists. So for this first paragraph of text, there's no numbering applied. And look up on the ruler. The indent markers are all nicely and neatly lined up against the left-hand margin because that's where we want all of the text to wrap. But if I click in the numbered paragraph, you'll see these markers become split with that first marker lined up with the number and the second marker lined up with where the paragraph will wrap, where the text will wrap. And we've actually got a one centimeter gap there between the number and the text. You can see that one centimeter is the distance on the ruler between those two markers. And if you dive into the paragraph dialog box, you can see that this is called a hanging indent. And sure enough, there's the one centimeter gap we've got. Now we need to know about this because when we start setting up our custom lists, then we need to be aware of what these measurements mean. But anyway, let me just cancel that for now. And I'm going to give myself a brand new blank document and use that magic code to put in a bit of random text. So there we go. That'll do nicely. And I'm going to select the whole document with control A. And I'm going to apply a multi-level numbered list format. And I'm going to pick the one that most closely matches what I've got in mind. So I'm going to choose this one 1.1, 1.1.1 example. And I choose that. And then I can use the indent buttons to indent various parts of that to the next level down if I want to. So a couple of indents there. And of course, if I change my mind about something being numbered, I can click in it and turn off the numbering. And because it's automatically numbered, then of course, all of this updates. So the numbering is working fine, but I'm not that happy about the spacing. Firstly, the paragraph spacing. So if you look at this, I really prefer to have a bit of a gap between the paragraphs. So back into the paragraph dialog box, and you'll see that this checkbox will switch itself on because the default behavior for lists in Microsoft Word is that it won't add the space between paragraphs in a list. So if I uncheck that and click OK, that's spread it out a little bit. But also, I'm not that happy with the spacing of the number at the third level here. So if you have a look at this, I think that the number is a bit too close to the text. Now I could, of course, look up at the ruler and manually drag that little triangle to increase that gap. But that was a little bit slapdash. And you'll notice it's only done it for the one paragraph I was clicked in. What if I've been using this same numbering style elsewhere in my document? It becomes very fiddly and not very accurate to be making that same adjustment elsewhere. And anyway, my organization might have specific measurements that I'm supposed to use for my indents, because quite often these sorts of numbering styles are used in very formal documents, you know, contracts or something. So for all of these reasons, it's really useful to define our own numbering format for a multi-level numbered list and save it for use in future documents. So let's do it. Give yourself another brand new blank document and put in some random text again using our magic code. So type that in and hit enter. And this time on the multi-level list button, choose the option down towards the bottom there, define new multi-level list. And when you choose that, you've got quite a few options to set. But the idea is you set the options at each level. So the very first level, which is previewed here, has got the number with a full stop after it. And down towards the bottom, you can see, well, actually, I don't want the, the full stop. I'd rather have a bracket after the number instead. And you can see the preview updating. You could change the number style. So perhaps you want Roman numerals or letters or, or whatever. You can see lots of options there. And also the spacing. So the position of that number, you can see that the number is aligned to the left. That's correct. And the first level, well, the number is lined at 0 centimeters from the margin. It's right up against the margin, so that's correct. But let's imagine in my organization, we have a company standard that there's always one centimeter gap between the number and the text. So I'm going to change that to one centimeter. And to save myself a bit of time for the other levels, I'm going to choose this button set for all levels to say, well, actually, I want each additional level to indent by another centimeter and click OK. Now the next level, level two, you can see that's the 1.1 style. And that is actually what I want, but that's not very helpful for showing you how it works. So I'm going to delete what it has there in the in the value. And I'm going to build it up so we can see how it works. But if you choose the, the one, two, three number style, and then look at the preview, you think, well, ah, oh, well, hang on a minute. I do want it to be style one, two, three, but I want it to also show the number from the previous level. And that's what this option here is for. Include level number from level one. And then you can put the full stop in between the two numbers. And you'll see that the spacing has already been set because I chose that option set for all levels. So this time the number's going to be one centimeter in from the margin. Well, that's correct because it's the second level. And then the text is another centimeter on from that. So that gives us a one centimeter gap between the number and where the text will wrap. 
Level three, same sort of idea. I'm just going to remove the full stop from the end of that there. And you could keep going. So level four, let's imagine, well, actually for level four, we just have straightforward bullet points, for example. So let me just put a, a little bullet point in there for level four. But you keep going, modify the number of levels you think you want to use. Let's click OK and just apply that to our document. So I'm going to select the whole document and apply that list. And you can see it's the one that we customised because I've got the bracket after the one we added that. And I'm just going to indent a couple of these and then do another further double indent to show the third level in. So I'm quite happy with the spacing. Look at the markers on the ruler. As I click through the different levels, they're all exactly one centimetre apart. So the spacing is in line with our company standards. But I'm not very happy with the paragraph spacing yet again. So as before, I can go into the paragraph dialog box and make sure that option there is not checked. So that's looking good. That's exactly how I want it to look. And I can even easily apply it to other parts of the same document because it remembers that as a list style I'm using in this current document. But what about for future documents? Now, there are a couple of different approaches, but the way I like best is to choose this option down here to define a new list style. Now, if you choose that, you give this list style a name. So I'm going to call it contract numbering. And notice that this new numbered list is defined in terms of what type of style it is as a list style. Now, a style is a collection of formatting, which we will learn about in more detail another time. But notice that this is greyed out. I can't change this. And also notice there's a format button at the bottom left hand corner of this dialog, but some of these options are greyed out. I can't change them because these greyed out options are driven by the underlying style, the underlying list style. And we're going to need to know about that when we make one final change to capturing our numbered list. But anyway, you'll see that it's captured all of the indents and the number formats and whatnot. So I'm happy that it has captured that. And I'm going to choose the option here. Yes, I want this saved for all new documents. Fantastic. Click OK. Now to help us when we try it out, I'm just going to select a couple of sentences from here and press Control C to put it on the clipboard. So now let's create a brand new blank document. And then from the drop down here, we should be able to see, well, there's our list style that we captured with the name and I can identify it from the preview. Fantastic. Let me choose it. Paste in my text. Looking good. Hit enter, tab it in, paste it in. Well, the numbering is looking good. But hang on a minute. What about the paragraph spacing? It hasn't remembered that. But do you remember when we defined this list style, the paragraph options were greyed out because those were driven by the underlying list style. And I'm afraid the underlying default list style does not have the spacing between paragraphs. But we can get round this if we customise that underlying list style. So over here where it says styles, click the drop down and right click on the list style. Choose to modify it. Click the format button and now these options are available. Click paragraph and there's that pesky checkbox that's checked again. So uncheck that, click OK, choose the option I do want this default set for new documents, please, and then click OK again. So let's just try it one more time just to really put it to the test. So brand new blank document. Let's choose our list style. There it is, contract numbering with the preview, paste in the text. Looking good, tab. The spacing is looking good for both the paragraphs and the numbering. So, phew, we did it. We saved the perfect multi-level numbered list for use in all of our documents. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.